back to another exciting episode of the Wagging Tales podcast. Today is just me, your host, Jay, flying solo as Bridges off doing Scottish things and whatnot, like wearing a kilt, playing the bagpipes and all that sort of stuff. You might think that I'm taking the piss out of him, as we normally always do, but that's actually what he's busy with this weekend. So without further ado, let's start by diving into the fascinating world of dogs, sense of smell and the importance of sniffing. When it comes to the sense of smell, dogs have an extraordinary advantage over humans. While humans have around 6 million olfactory receptors, dogs boast an astounding 300 million or more. This vast difference in the number of receptors allow dogs to detect and discriminate scents with unparalleled precision. It's truly mind-boggling. So a dog's sense of smell is estimated to be up to 100,000 times more powerful than that of a human. This heightened sense of smell is a result of their anatomical and physiological adaptations throughout the years, throughout the centuries even. Dogs have a highly specialized olfactory system that is finely tuned for scent detection. Their noses are equipped with a complex network of turbinates. Turbinates? I think that's what it's called. Turbinates. Which are bony structures that can increase the surface area within their noses, within their nasal cavities. This increased surface area provides more space for all these receptors, allowing dogs to capture and process a wide range of smells. In addition to the turbinates, dogs also have a unique organ called the vomeronasal organ. I'm not sure if I'm calling it right, but it's also known as the Jacobson's organ. This organ is responsible for detecting pheromones, which are chemical signals emitted by other animals. It further enhances a dog's ability to gather information through scent. It's really, really very fascinating how dogs' noses are finely tuned scent detecting machines. They're capable of discerning intricate details in the scent, such as identifying a specific odor or detecting faint traces of a scent over long distances. This extraordinary sense of smell has practical applications in various fields. They are employed as search and rescue dogs, uh, detection dogs, even medical detection dogs, which I'll cover on later in this uh, episode of the podcast, where they can sniff out certain diseases or assist some individual with conditions such as diabetes. So it's sort of a superpower that allows them to perceive the world in a way that's beyond our comprehension. It's a remarkable gift that we can appreciate and learn from, and I'll do my best to try to go through everything I know about this. Now that we've explored this comparison between like a dog's sense of smell and ours, I want to focus on the importance of sniffing in their lives. Sniffing serves multiple essential purposes for dogs, starting with information gathering and exploration. Sniffing is also a dog's way of gathering valuable information about their environment. When they sniff the air, the ground, the objects, the people around them, they can detect scents left by other animals, humans, or even slight changes in their surroundings. It's like reading a storybook for them, but written in scent. Sniffing also taps into a dog's natural curiosity and allows them to explore and interact with their environment in a meaningful way. It helps them create a sensory map of their surroundings. They can identify landmarks, um, look for potential sources of food, or even perceive potential threats. Dogs also have a remarkable ability to track, sense, and follow scent trails. This instinctual behavior is deeply ingrained in their DNA and has been honed through thousands of years of evolution. It's a skill that has been invaluable in activities such as search and rescue operations or hunting. Sniffing isn't just about gathering information and exploring the environment, of course. It also plays a vital role in communication, social interaction amongst dogs. So when dogs meet, they engage in a sniffing ritual. You've seen that before. They kind of go in circles, sniffing each other's bums. It allows them to exchange information about each other, such as their identity, even their health, or even their emotional state. Dogs have scent glands located in various parts of their body, such as uh, their anal glands or their paw pads. So I'm sure every dog owner at some point has smelled their dog's paws and they kind of smell weird. (laughs) There's a distinct scent to it, right? But dogs can learn about each other and establish social bonds that way. It's truly remarkable how sniffing is deeply ingrained in a dog's social life as well. It's truly remarkable how sniffing is deeply ingrained in a dog's social life. It helps them recognize familiar individuals whether they are human or canine. Sniffing also serves as problem solving and mental stimulation for dogs. Engaging their sense of smell in games or puzzles can provide dogs with mental enrichment and keep their minds sharp. 
So it is of utmost importance for dog owners to understand the significance of sniffing and for you to support this natural behaviour. By allowing dogs to engage in sniffing activities, we provide them with an outlet for their instincts and keep them mentally engaged and enriched. So for example, during walks, it's crucial to provide dogs with opportunities to sniff and explore their environment. Allow them the time to follow interesting scents or investigate their surroundings and engage their noses. It's their way of experiencing the world and satisfying their natural instincts. Of course, do so if it's safe. So while we encourage sniffing, it's equally important to ensure their safety. Using a secure leash during walks will help keep them protected from potential dangers while they indulge in their sniffing adventures. A dog's sense of smell far surpasses that of us humans. Thanks to their numerous olfactory receptors and specialized nasal structures, sniffing plays a crucial role in their lives. I like to think of their noses as sensory GPS systems. It guides them through the world. So identifying landmarks, sources of food, threats, all of this is information to help them make a decision as they explore their environment. So apart from allowing them to sniff on walks, we can also tap into this amazing ability by incorporating games and puzzles that engage these senses. These activities not only provide mental stimulation, but also add an element of fun and excitement to their daily routines. They thoroughly enjoy using their sense of smell to solve problems and find hidden objects. So sniffing games such as hiding treats or toys for them to find engage this instinct and provide the mental enrichment. They can utilize their noses to locate hidden items with remarkable precision. These games challenge their scent detection abilities and help keep their minds engaged. Apart from that, dogs have an innate desire to work for their rewards, and sniffing games provide the perfect opportunity for them to use their sense of smell in a productive and enjoyable way. It taps into their natural hunting or foraging instincts, providing both physical and mental stimulation. So we actually provide dogs with a unique outlet for their mental energy. It helps prevent boredom, um, destructive behavior, and all in all, it promotes a sense of accomplishment as they successfully solve the puzzle, find the treasure, things like that. So sniffing engages their minds in a different way than traditional physical exercise alone, stimulates their cognitive abilities, enhances their problem-solving skills, and boosts their overall mental well-being. So it is very important for us as dog owners to recognize the value of sniffing as a mental enrichment activity. We have to encourage and support this behavior. We can enhance our dog's quality of life as well as strengthen our bond with them. So one very quick and easy way to encourage sniffing behavior is to provide ample opportunities for them to engage this sense of smell during their walks. Instead of rushing through the walks, allow your dog to explore and sniff the environment at their own pace. This allows them to fully engage their noses and satisfy their natural instincts. Slow-paced walks with plenty of sniffing breaks not only provide mental stimulation, but also allow dogs to gather the information about their surroundings, which is very important to their overall well-being. So a skittish dog that doesn't have enough time to investigate the uh, area that they're in will stay skittish because they don't have all the information about what is around their home. They sniff it for a while and then maybe they're, they're asked to, to move along so they have kind of like half of the answer and then the remaining half is a question mark, which gives them anxiety. If you're looking to find like games or puzzles for them, remember that every dog is different. Like a bloodhound would obviously do a lot better than a dog that's not bred to do that, right? So you have to find the right sniffing game or puzzle that suits your dog's individual preferences and abilities. Some dogs may excel more, while others may prefer things like the food dispensing toys or puzzles. So what do I mean by sniffing breaks during your walks? By incorporating sniffing breaks into walks, I mean have a structured walk whereby you go from point A to point B, walk nicely on a loose leash, and then when it's time, you're in a good area with a lot of grass maybe, or like in a park, give them a command or a cue, like let's say with my girls, I tell them free, and then they just get a bit of time to just sniff around the area. It's like, reading the daily newspaper to them. We're giving them the opportunity to engage in their strongest sense, and it's their natural behavior for them to gather all the information they require about that environment. For a start, your dog might require a lot longer than usual because they need the time to fully explore and process all of these scents. 
I remember at the start with Ori, she could stop in one spot for about 10 minutes and then Blue usually does it in three minutes. But over time, they start to be more comfortable in the surrounding. They know what to expect most of the time. It's usually the same few scents, uh, the same dogs in the area or the same people. And then if it takes longer, there's usually a new scent there. So that's a way of figuring out like, oh, maybe one of my neighbors got a dog. So patience is key during these moments as it allows our dogs to engage their sense of smell fully and derive the benefits of sniffing. Of course, safety should always be a top priority. A secure leash helps prevent dogs from venturing into unsafe areas or getting into a conflict with another animal. It's crucial to find a balance between allowing sniffing opportunities and maintaining control to ensure their well-being. Next, I want to talk about the superheroes of dogs, who are the working dogs who play essential roles in various fields. Specifically, I want to discuss drug sniffing dogs, rescue dogs, as well as service dogs that use their sense of smell to detect things like diabetic attacks. Drug sniffing and rescue dogs are often referred to as the unsung heroes of law enforcement and emergency services. Their remarkable sense of smell and specialized training enable them to perform critical tasks that benefit society as a whole. So drug sniffing dogs are trained to detect the presence of illegal substances. Their exceptional olfactory abilities allow them to identify even minute quantities of drugs hidden in various environments. It's truly amazing. If you go on YouTube, you just search up uh, drug sniffing dogs or dogs in law enforcement. It, it really is an eye opener. Their accuracy and efficiency have been instrumental in combating drug trafficking and keeping our community safe. It's really amazing how they can sniff out drugs that may be concealed or even disguised. These highly trained dogs work alongside law enforcement agencies. Uh, they assist in drug detection operations at airports, seaports, borders, uh, or even local communities. Their keen sense of smell allows them to locate hidden narcotics with remarkable precision. So similarly, rescue dogs play a crucial role in search and rescue as well. These amazing dogs are trained to locate missing persons, survivors in disaster areas, and even find individuals trapped under rubble or in the middle of, of the forest. But these dogs undergo intensive training to identify and follow human scent trails or um, drug scents, even in challenging and treacherous conditions. Their sense of smell and determination are invaluable to locating and saving lives. These superheroes, they work tirelessly alongside their human handlers, demonstrating unwavering dedication and unwavering commitment to their mission. If they were positively trained to do things like that, to them it's all a game. It, it honestly is. So they, they see it as if they do this, what they've been trained to do for the past, I don't know how many months, years it might take, in the end they get a reward for doing so as well. That's why they're so diligent about it. They, they want to do it so much. Another remarkable category of working dogs are service dogs that use a sense of smell to detect things like diabetic attacks. These dogs provide invaluable support to individuals with diabetes, offering both um, physical assistance and emotional companionship. Dogs trained as diabetic alert dogs have the unique ability to detect changes in their owner's blood sugar levels through scent cues. They can sense when their owner's blood sugar is too high or too low even before any visible symptoms occur because that's how our body works, right? The inside changes for, for things like this and then you might show signs physically. So I want you all to sit for a moment and think about that. They can smell when your blood sugar level is too high or too low. That is amazing. This early detection allows individuals to take the necessary actions such as maybe administer medication or seek for assistance so that they can manage their condition effectively. This, of course, has to be done through specialized training to recognize the scent changes associated with fluctuations in blood sugar levels. Once they detect a change, they are trained to alert their owner or to seek help. Apart from that, this companionship and support provided by these service dogs go beyond their life-saving abilities. They also offer emotional comfort and a sense of security to individuals living with diabetes. It enhances their overall well-being because you know that your dog's trained to do this. You can go out knowing that, having your mind at ease basically, knowing that if, if my blood sugar goes too high or too low, my dog's there to let me know. 
So just these superhero dogs alone demonstrate the immense capabilities of a dog's senses of smell and their ability to serve and protect. This shows dedication, intelligence, unwavering loyalty, and that's why I call them superheroes. So what is scent work? Scent work involves teaching dogs to use their sense of smell to locate and identify specific scents or objects. It's a very versatile activity that can be enjoyed by dogs of all breeds and ages, and it provides an excellent outlet for their natural instincts and abilities. It's never too late to start. Scent work can be a fun and engaging way to bond with your dog while challenging their minds and providing a rewarding experience. It's a great option for dogs who may not be able to participate in high energy activities or those who simply enjoy using their noses. I say that because uh, there are some senior dogs who require some more mental stimulation and they might not be very mobile. So scent work is a great way to do it as well. So let's dive into the steps involved in doing scent work with dogs. The first step is to, of course, choose a scent that you want your dog to search for. It can be a specific essential oil or a particular herb or any scent that is safe for your dog to sniff. Once again, safe for your dog to sniff. Once you have chosen your scent, you can begin introducing it to your dog in a positive and rewarding way. Start by associating the scent with something pleasant like treats or playtime. This helps create a positive association with the scent and builds more excitement and motivation for your dog. The next step is to introduce a search area. You can start with a small space, probably indoors, like a room or just a designated area in your home, maybe your front yard. Scatter some treats or hide a toy with the scent in this area. Encourage your dog to use their nose to find the hidden items. As your dog becomes more comfortable or more excited with searching in the indoor environment, you can gradually increase the difficulty levels by adding more hiding spots or expanding your search area. You can also introduce different surfaces like grass or concrete, the pavements, to provide a variety and a challenge for your dog. It's essential to reward your dog for successful searches or even minor milestones. When they find the hidden scent or object, praise them very excitedly, very enthusiastically, and provide treats or uh, engage in playtime as a reward. This positive reinforcement helps reinforce their understanding of the task and encourages them to continue their scent work. As your dog progresses in their scent work, you can introduce more advanced challenges such as searching in outdoor environments or using different types of containers or scent vessels as they call it. Scent work is not only mentally stimulating for your dog but also provides an opportunity for you to strengthen your bond and communication. It's a wonderful activity that taps into their natural instincts and abilities while providing them with a sense of purpose and accomplishment. Scent work can also be tailored to suit your dog's individual needs and preferences. It's important to remember, and I know I say this almost every single episode, every dog progresses at their own pace. So be patient, and most of all, have fun with the process. It's supposed to be a game you engage with your dog. It's not supposed to be stressful. And as with any training activity, always ensure the safety and well-being of your dog. Avoid using harmful substances or scents that may be, may be toxic to them. Provide them with plenty of breaks, water, and rest during these sessions. So here are some signs that your dog may be actually very good at scent games or has been working on things similar to scent games without you even knowing. So the first sign is always that your dog might be very persistent or have a very strong interest in sniffing? Does your dog constantly have their nose to the ground? Are they always eagerly exploring the environment through a scent? If so, it's a good indication that they have a natural inclination towards using their sense of smell. Dogs who are highly motivated by scent tend to be persistent in their search for odors. They may exhibit intense focus when they come across an interesting scent, and they won't easily give up until they've thoroughly investigated it. Another sign is a keen sense of curiosity and problem-solving abilities. Dogs who enjoy scent games often display a strong desire to explore and figure things out. They may show interest in finding hidden objects or investigating new scents. They also choose to demonstrate their ability to use their noses as a tool for problem-solving. Dogs who excel in scent games often demonstrate excellent concentration and focus as well. They can maintain their attention on a specific scent or search area for an extended period of time. They are undeterred by distractions in their environment. 
this level of focus is something that is huge for search and rescue dogs or drug sniffer dogs, working dogs, basically. Dogs that possess a strong play drive can also excel in said games. They may become highly motivated and excited when presented with scent-related activities or challenges. They have this innate sense of uh, enthusiasm for engaging in play with scents, which indicates their potential for enjoying and succeeding and excelling in scent games. Additionally, dogs with a high food drive can be excellent candidates for scent games as well. Their motivation to search for hidden treats or food can make scent work even more engaging and rewarding for them. The desire to find and access the food can drive them in scent-related activities. But one important sign to look for is your dog's ability to stay calm and patient during scent games. Dogs that can maintain their composure and avoid becoming overly aroused or frustrated are better equipped to handle the challenges presented in scent work. Patience and a calm demeanor are key for success. So even if your dog doesn't display all of these signs, don't be discouraged. Scent games can still be a fun and rewarding activity for your dog, regardless of their natural abilities. It's all about providing them with opportunities to engage their sense of smell and enjoy the process. I touched a bit on this subject because I don't want people who have their dogs with behavioral issues thinking that scent games is going to solve their behavioral issues. No, I, I don't want you to see it that way because some dogs might be very terrified or they, they might be very shut down. They might be stressed. They might be anxious. So while I agree that these games are very good for dogs with, with some of these issues, you should still address the root of those issues first before starting with scent games. So scent work, if you train your dog in scent work in a very positive way, it is actually very easy for you to introduce a new location to your dog or a new area, especially for people who tend to move around a lot. If you have trained your dog in scent work, it's very easy for you to positively associate a new place for your dog because you can just set it up and then get your dog to search, get your dog to sn sniff around, to look for treats that you placed around or toys, and then they immediately just get so happy with that place and then they don't feel so stressed or scared of new locations. Your dog might already be doing scent work without you knowing. So some of you with dogs at home, maybe your dog barks at the door when somebody is there or if somebody's just walking past outside, right? And even though they can't see because they can hear the footsteps or they can smell a, a different scent. So they, they bark a lot at movement outside, but then have you noticed that maybe some of your dogs, when you're outside the door, they don't bark. They actually get excited. That's because they are using their noses and they know your scent. When you're at the door, they don't bark. They just get excited. Maybe they whine a little bit. You can hear a lot of movement inside. That's also basically a scent game because they've already learned your scent. So both my dogs, um, Blue and Ori, they are progressing through scent work right now. Blue is is picking it up and progressing a lot quicker than Ori, but I, I go at their own paces. I don't I don't force Blue to slow down or Ori to keep up with, with the progress that they individually make. And I also found out what encourages them, what motivates them the most. So for Blue, it's the scent of another dog because when she sees another dog, especially if it's one that she knows and she can play with, she gets very excited for it and then she will sniff and go look for it. She displays signs to tell me that she's picked up a scent and that she wants to follow the scent, usually by... It's, it's very subtle sometimes. Maybe they just lift up their front paw, one of their front paws, or sometimes they go all out into like whining or you see the tail wagging consistently. So I've, I've taken toys from, from some of her very close playmates and then I tr try to put that around and then I get her to, to search for the scent on walks even. And for Ori, it's more food motivated. I just have to put treats somewhere. She sometimes finds it, sometimes doesn't, which is fine. Her success rate has been going slowly improving. I'd say it's about a 70% right now that she'll find it at home. She's not ready to do it outside yet because uh, it's still quite distracting for her outside. Of course, there are days where they just maybe they're too stressed out. I know that if it there's a really bad thunderstorm a couple days ago that we won't be able to do things like that. So of course during those days or that period of time 
we disengage from things like this. I don't try to make them progress through scent work and things like that. I just do more calming exercises at home. Let them be more relaxed. Blue also, most dogs are actually, they're able to pick up the scent of rain, uh, like the changes in the weather before it starts raining. So Blue has that and she used to be very anxious of it. So people would call it like thunderphobia and things like that. But if one, one thing I figured out was that I positively associated that scent and now she isn't so anxious when it's about to rain anymore. So I wouldn't say her thunderphobia is cured, but back then, if it started raining while I was outside, I knew that she would be very anxious. There was once she even tore, um, she even tore up my mattress, like completely just ripped through it because of how anxious she was. And then that was like a <laughs> thousand five hundred bucks gone. But I worked on it, so I just kept working at it, and then I just figured out like I gave it a try. Scent work. So every time I check like the weather report, if you're staying in London, this won't work because you can never trust the weather report. But over here in Singapore, the weather report is quite accurate. If there's a chance of rain, if there's a good chance of rain, thunderstorms and things like that, I try to make my schedule open and then I do scent work with her so that she doesn't feel so anxious. And now when it's about to rain, she actually comes up to me. Even if the sky isn't dark yet, she knows. She's, she smells the change in the air. She comes up to me. And then she kind of lets me know. So, so that's her communication to me. It's it's my duty to figure out whether she's wanting to go for a walk or or maybe she's she's letting me know that it's gonna rain, and then we just part uh, we just engage in an activity then, or she gets rewarded for that. So to wrap this up, throughout this episode, we've discovered that dogs possess an incredible sense of smell, far superior to that of humans. Their olfactory receptors enable them to detect and analyze scents with astonishing precision. It's important to understand this fundamental difference and appreciate the world of scents that dogs experience. Sniffing is a natural and instinctive behavior for dogs. It serves as their primary way of gathering information about their environment, communicating with other dogs, and engaging in mental stimulation. It's essential for us to embrace and support this behavior. We've also discussed how sniffing allows dogs to gather information, explore their surroundings, and engage their tracking instincts. It's a vital part of their social interactions, helps them to communicate with other dogs. Sniffing is not only a source of mental stimulation, but also an avenue for problem solving and critical thinking. We also explored how dogs use their sense of smell for games, puzzles, and enrichment activities. By providing opportunities for sniffing and engaging their sense of smell, we can enhance their engagement and overall well-being. Sniffing is a way for dogs to exercise their minds and fulfill their natural instincts. So what should we do? We should encourage and support all this behavior, which is crucial for a healthy and a happy dog. During walks, we can allow our dogs to take sniffing breaks, allow them to explore and experience the world through their noses. By providing interactive toys and puzzles or games, that can stimulate their sense of smell, we can further enrich these, their lives. It's also important to understand that sniffing is not only a natural behavior, but also a healthy one. By embracing sniffing and providing opportunities for our dogs to engage in this activity, we enhance their overall quality of life. Sniffing is a source of joy and fulfillment for our furry friends, and it deepens the bond we share with them. So let's encourage and support our dog sniffing behavior. Give them the time and space to explore, to sniff, to engage their senses of smell fully. By doing so, we contribute to their physical and mental health, allowing them to live their lives to the fullest. As I conclude this episode of the Wagging Tails podcast, I hope you've gained a deeper understanding and appreciation for the natural and healthy nature of sniffing in dogs. Remember to embrace and support your dog's behavior, this behavior. Provide them with a lot of opportunities for enrichment and mental stimulation. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this episode has inspired you to view sniffing in a new light and prioritize its importance in your interactions with your furry friends. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with other dog lovers. Stay tuned for our next episode where I'll be covering more captivating topics about the wonders of the canine world. Until then, keep embracing the power of sniffing and nurturing this special connection you share with your canine companions. Happy sniffing.